Welcome back to another episode of with North American Productions. Recently a subscriber asked for me to do a Hans video and I haven't put another one out since the episode where I introduced him, the last one with my boat. So anyway, I decided to take a few moments out of my day and just kind of go over with you guys what I feed him, uh, how I care for him, and basically what it's like living with this black wolf right here. Right, bud? <laughs> so, anyways, here you go. So, let's get things started. Living with a German Shepherd, it's not easy. Living with the DDR German Shepherd, he's high energy, he is working line Shepherd. So he is go, go, go all day, as you can tell. He's always in my face. This guy will not let me relax. If you thought you were gonna buy a German Shepherd, especially a working line DDR Shepherd like, like Hans, and you thought you were gonna kick back on the couch right here and watch your TV shows, no, those days are over. I cannot lay back at all. I literally have to stay sitting forward, just like how I am right now, to keep this guy at bay, as you can tell. Look at him, he's crazy, okay? So these guys are super high energy. I would not recommend this dog for anybody who's inactive. Uh, if you're the lazy sort of person, forgive me for saying, do not buy this dog because this dog requires a high energy level owner. Meaning if you're going to be a runner, jogger, or if you're going to take him to the park every day, or you're going to let him in the yard every day, then yeah, go ahead and get one of these dogs. But these guys require an active owner. They're not meant to be stuck in a cage all day. They're just not meant for that. This guy was designed to work 16 hour days in harsh environment, harsh cold environment in East Germany. Because like I said in my first video, these guys were for the East German army, the East Communist German army. And they're the ones that use these dogs. So, look at him. He's always in my face. Like I said, guys, I'm not lying. This guy, these dogs are always going to be in your face. These dogs will test you. They are super smart, but he is always by my side. He's like... He's like my shadow that I can't escape. If I move, he moves. And I'll show you. Watch when I get up. I left, he followed. I came back to the couch, he's here again. He's right next to me. Okay, so let's cut the chase. What do I feed my Hans, my German Shepherd? I use. I use Taste of the Wild. This is all I use. This is what he's been eating since he was a puppy. The breeder weaned him off his mother's milk using Taste of the Wild. So I always do a 50-50 mix of Pacific Stream. So he's got that omega-3 oils because fish oil is very good for dogs, right? So I do half Pacific Stream smoked salmon. And I usually do venison. This is a new bag. I'm trying something new here. This is completely new. This is wild boar, Southwest Canyon. So he was a little bit weirded out when I first introduced this to his uh, his kibbles, but uh, he's kind of he's kind of getting used to it now. Normally it's 50/50 smoked salmon and venison. Taste the water. So no no grains, no grain diet, high protein diet. Um, this is he's all excited because these are your treats, huh, bud? Those are your treats. Blue, blue buffalo biscuits. Also, no grain. This is turkey. And then also I got smoked salmon right here too. He loves that stuff, right bud? That's your treats, I know. His collar system, I use a dual collar system. If you can see this, there's a lanyard here. That's just seven feet of paracord. It connects from his prong collar to his regular collar. The reason why you do that is because prong collar, I've seen it multiple times already, prong collar can come attached and then you'll lose your dog. You might be right there on a busy street and all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. You know, he shouldn't take off, but let's say he, he did take off. Now you got a dead dog. So I use a dual collar system, which he has a regular chain collar. It's not a choke chain. I don't use choke chain, guys. It's just a chain collar. And this seven feet of paracord attaches both together. So if that comes apart, it automatically goes right to his regular collar and I still have him under control. That's the dual collar system. That's what I like to use with him. All right. I also use this rolled leather. Oh, Jesus. 
Come on, Oz. I'm trying to make a video. <laughs> he's crazy. He thinks he's going for a walk right now. So anyway, I'll put that down because he's, he's getting too excited. That's a rolled leather leash. It's a very strong leash. This. All right, bud. <laughs> I know. I'm touching your leash and stuff. You think you're going for a walk. Poor guy thinks he's going for a walk. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. He was getting really excited because I was touching his leash. We already went for a walk, too, but every time I touch his leash, he wants to, he wants to go out and go crazy. So, anyways, put him in his cage. You'll probably hear him whining in the background. This is a custom muzzle that I got for him. The reason why I got the muzzle is because he hates getting his nails done. He absolutely hates getting his nails done. He will screech and cry at such a high, high pitched noise, you'll have to wear earplugs. So this is just for the protection of the ladies that cut his nails, just in case he decides to snap at him because he does get under a lot of stress cutting his nails. He's really good getting brushed and taking a bath Get, uh, taking a shower, but something about his nails he does not like. So I got a custom muzzle for him for the protection of the ladies who, who cut his nails. Like I said, this is just a nice rolled leather um, leash for him. Six foot leash. I never use retractable leash. Uh, if you want to untrain your dog, guys, use a retractable leash and put a harness on him. What are harnesses for? for? They're for pulling. They're for pulling sleds like a Siberian Husky. That's what an harness is for. I use prong collar. People might think that the prong collar is cruel. The prong collar is not cruel. You can say the electric uh, collar or even the choke chain is cruel, but not the prong collar. The prong collar le legitimately tightens evenly around the neck, whereas the choke chain puts pressure right here, right on the windpipe. And that's where it causes damage when you snap it with the choke chain. The prongs also aren't sharp, and what they do is they simulate his mother's teeth. Uh, when he's when they're puppies, the mother usually uh, puts them in check with a little bite, a little snap, or she even carries them with her teeth. So that's all the prong collar symbolizes is the teeth of his mother. So when you give a little 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 correction with the prong collar, it lets him know, hey, stop, stop what you're doing, you did wrong, right? So that's why I use the prong collar. And now, like I was saying before, I use a dual collar system, so he's got that. Uh, seven foot paracord always connected from his prong collar to his regular collar being that the prong collar comes undone I still have control of him with his regular collar not only that he has seven feet of paracord which is a survival tool so he always has a survival tool anytime him and I are out we can be out in the woods with my boat hiking and we do a survival situation I have seven feet of paracord on him at all times so I can make it a shelter so that's why I did that I made that little paracord um, uh, piece myself Anyways, so I feed him high protein diet, taste of the wild, and blue buffalo biscuits. That's, that's his normal routine right there. I also feed him plenty of meat. I'm a big guy, I like smoking meat in my barbecue. So that guy is spoiled, trust me, this isn't all he eats. Half of his food is turkey and chicken and steaks and hamburger patties, ribs. I mean, go down the list, guys. This guy eats a lot of stuff, fish. I just cooked fish last night. He ate fish. He's very spoiled. And it's all good for him. He needs that protein in his diet. That is his true true diet. I could put potatoes. I could put fruits. I could put stuff on the, on the ground. He's not going to touch it. He won't even eat it. I could put a Cheeto on the ground. He does not touch it. But one thing he does like, which I do give him, is planted peanuts. These nuts are heart healthy. So I enjoy them at night. And I've been feeding them since he was a puppy. He's not allergic to them, which is good. And he loves them. And they're great. They're actually healthy for him. So I try to feed him only healthy stuff, guys. But back to what I was saying about German Shepherds being super high energy. If you're not ready for this high energy level dog, do not buy them. Because it's common that these dogs are returned at six months of age when the cute puppy phase wears off and the new owner got more than they bargained for. Because this guy is a, a ball of energy. He's like a Tasmanian devil coming out of his cage. You better be able to get him out there and run him and get that, expend all that energy out of him. If not, you're going to turn him in and he's going to be thrown to the wolves, so to speak, you know, sent to the pound. And I don't like to see that, see that when people do that. Because honestly, I'm the type of person that when you make a commitment to your dog, it's for life. It's not a trial. When you get a dog, it's not a trial. Too many people that think, oh, I'll just give this a test run. A dog is not a test run. 
You know, when you get him as, as a puppy, he's learned to love you, protect you, and trust you, and then you just throw him away. So I'm going to vent a little bit here about that. So when you guys commit to getting your dog, make sure you are fully committed. No matter what the, what the case being, you, you will not turn in that dog. Okay? Do not ever, ever do that to a dog. He didn't do it to you, so why do it to him? That dog will give his life for you. And then you just throw him away because, oh, it was, it was too tough. He was too, too, too much. Wait, well, I got way more into, I was way in over my head. I don't like when people do that. I honestly do not like that. Okay, guys, so yeah, that was just a quick clip for you guys about what I feed my dog. Taste of the Wild, Blue Buffalo Wilderness Biscuits. All of them are non-grain. I don't feed them any grains. Okay? So, thanks for joining me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll try to get some more videos out with Hans and the boat. And I got some dirt bikes now. So, until next time, guys. Have a good one. Hey, here. Here. Zitzen. Zitzen. Blood. Here. Vraus. Vraus. Zitzen. Zitzen. Gute Hund. Bleib. Bleib. Frei. Hier. Sitzen. Gute Hund. Frei. Oh boy. Oh, look at those big bad teeth. Look at those teeth. Ah, you're so vicious. You're a crazy dog, huh? Aren't you, Hans?